me Bradley back with another video. Now this video is a little bit different. Normally I'm doing reviews or something else, but this one here is a series that I'm starting called the Creator Series. And basically all I'm doing is going around in local Virginia, Virginia, my local area, and I'm finding local artists who stand out the most, who really are kind of overshadowed by a lot of big artists. Cause we see a lot of them on, you know, YouTube and everything. And you know, and they're doing really well for themselves. And I'm not trying to knock them or anything. They're very good, but sometimes I think us local photographers or local artists get overshadowed by some of the big ones. So I went around and found at least three local artists that really stood out to me and really should be someone that should be promoted or someone that should be out there. So um, my first episode is with C.E. Brinkley. C.E. Brinkley is an actual diecast car photographer. There's not many um, out there like him. So he's actually in a very rare industry um, of diecast car photography. And he takes wonderful, I mean, really spot on photos. And then here's some photos, for example. I know they're freaking awesome and I love his work and I love how he just makes these cars look so epic and so almost realistic like. Um, so how we met, actually we met uh, at a uh, car club. We are in the same Mustang car club. Um, we had a Mustang, he sold it now, but um, we had a Mustang, we met and he told me what he did with his photography, how he shoots um, pretty much diecast cars. I thought that was so fascinating and he told me his story about how he got into that and that's when I was like, look, I would love to put your story on video. So yeah, so without further ado, this is C.E. Brinkley Photography, um, how he shoots diecast car and how he got into it. It's a very awesome story and I hope you guys enjoy it. I basically got into die-cast photography out of boredom. I uh, was diagnosed with an autoimmune disease and that took a toll on my mental health. And I kind of lost my social life. You know, a lot of friends were going off to college. This was right after high school. So I needed a distraction. So I've always been a Hot Wheels collector. My dad was a car collector and my mom loved cars as well. So all throughout my childhood, I collected die-cast cars, Hot Wheels, Matchbox, Johnny Lightning, didn't matter, I loved them all. So when I got sick, I started getting into the hobby as more of a collector. I started doing my own research. I started collecting pretty heavily to distract me from my autoimmune disease. So I just kind of combined my diecast with photography. I've always had a camera with me when I was in middle school or high school. I always documented my, <laughs> my, my school career, I guess you want to say. So I always had a camera with me and one day I joined the Facebook Hot Wheels newsletter group and I noticed that a lot of collectors posted on there and a lot of the posts were basically about what that collector had recently purchased, what they found in the store, their recent, you know, Hot Wheels haul, they call it. And after a while, after reading post after post, you know, it kind of gets redundant. You kind of see the same post over and over again. And I thought, hmm, you know, why don't I just start capturing my collection that I already have instead of posting what I may have just purchased. So. You know, being sick, being broke, it ain't like I could go out there and purchase a lot of cars anyway. So I had saved um, up some money and had gotten me a smartphone. And for the time period, this was like around 2013, the smartphone that I had had a decent, you know, uh, camera. Uh, so I just started taking cars and practicing on that smartphone. I said, I'm gonna go outside, I'm gonna try to make them look realistic. And people started to comment on my posts. You know, they started liking it. And it kind of just grew from there. It got to the point where I could not, I could not advance anymore as far as cell phone quality. I couldn't really, branch off just on the cell phone. So I started looking at cameras and the camera that I have now 
is the Coolpix B500. And I did some research on this camera and I got this camera because of the macro setting on it. I did some research and said, they said that this camera was good for getting up close. So I was like, hmm. And I like the screen on this one. The screen flips up and out so I can get interesting angles. So I just bought the camera and went from there and it was a healthy distraction. Little did I know that um, it would keep me pretty busy for about two or three years. <laughs> So yeah, guys, his car collection was amazing. I mean, going through and looking at everything and, and seeing all his collections, I mean, really was fascinating. I mean, it was unreal how many cars he had. And um, I used to not collect, but I used to have um, Hot Wheel cars myself. So seeing them and just seeing all of them and seeing how they could be collected. And now I kind of feel like I feel bad for letting go of my huge collection because I had a box full of all NASCAR die diecast cars, like the small ones. I had all cars all of them and now I, I gave them away to someone else and now I feel like yeah that was dumb but oh well it is what it is but yeah his house was amazing had every kind of um, vintage stuff vintage cars vintage everything and just old Hot Wheels to new Hot Wheels so it was amazing and now this part here is basically talking about how much each one of his cars are worth it's actually very interesting check this part out <laughs> If I sold that, I could buy. I could buy a two thousand dollar camera. Oh, Easy. seriously? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Like the the little pink one right there, mm -hmm. the pink truck, um, in the case up top. That's worth about a hundred dollars. Seriously? Yeah, yeah. That's why they're in the case. <laughs> wow. Dude. Yeah. And the purple one below it, that one's about forty, forty dollars. The yellow one above it. The, yellow and black one that one's about forty yeah. dollars the orange one's about 15. yeah so each one none of those are worth a dollar so usually mainline cars you know that you get in the store are like 99 cents yeah, yeah, and then yeah, yeah, yeah. that's the like introductory you know line <laughs> and then you have the red line club members and you have the premium lines and everything like that so like the pink one up there, that one was a um, red line club member truck. And that purple one below it was a Hot Wheels convention truck. So yeah, they all, that um, the general uh, Lee um, Charger up there, 06 on it. Yes. Um, yes. I don't know if you remember, but when they were, what was it was a couple years ago, they were having a problem with the rebel flag. Oh, uh, yeah, that? yeah, yeah, yeah. That car has the flag on top of the roof. That's the Dukes of Hazzard car. Yeah, it's a, uh, it's not an exact replica because they didn't have the license to duplicate the General Lee. Oh. So it's a replica of it. Okay. And it came out in 2006. That's why it's got the 06 on the side. Okay. And when that started happening, that car skyrocketed because anything General Lee just went up in value, and anything that mimicked General Lee. It went up in value, value as well wow. and that was one of hot wheels releases that came closest to the general lee so that one went that one went i bought that car for three dollars and it went up to about 30 or 40 dollars so i was like hey <laughs> <laughs> so in the hot wheels world what i love about it is that it's so diverse so you have people that are card collectors People that like everything pristine, you know, they put them in protector packs, line their wall, or they stuff them in boxes and save them for years to come. Um, you have people who are loose collectors, you know, who like to display their collection loosely so they can hold them, switch them out. That's kind of like what I do. I used to be a cardboard collector. Then I ran out of space and said, you know what, I would get more fulfillment. Um, displaying them rather than just stuffing them away in a box or a container and with doing my photography it helped to have them loose anyway um, you got people who customize them they actually buy cars a certain casting that they love take it apart repaint it add headlights taillights rubber tires they can pretty much do everything you can do with a real car it's mind-blowing what people do 
You got dioramas, people who build everything scaled to size to depending on what die cast card that they have, whether it's 1 18th or 1 64th scale. And then of course, there's the people like me who go outside and play with them and take pictures of them. So um, the Hot Wheels world is very diverse. There's a lot of money in it. If you know what you're doing, you can have a really nice collection that will keep its value in years to come. You see guys, not only does he take dope photos with these Hot Wheels cars, but he actually makes pretty decent money from selling them. I mean, he told me one where he had a Ferrari, Ferrari Enzo. I forget which model he had, because there's two different models of it for Hot Wheels. And one actually, the one he had, he sold it for $300. And it's like, what? A car that big? Called, pretty much he got, it, he sold it and got $300 dollars for it so it's just really cool and really interesting how something so small can have such a value and can really make you good money so you probably should think about investing in some of this stuff i mean i'm kind of like hmm i really regret <laughs> selling some of my or giving away a lot of my hot wheels cars so yeah so this next section is basically we're going to the uh, tennis court and um I challenged them. Now, I do have two die-cast NASCARs. They're bigger ones. Now, I don't know if they could sell for anything. They probably won't. I don't know. Maybe they will because they are vintage and they are old, especially one of them. Um, it's kind of very rare to see it now. Um, so, I want to challenge him with those two die-cast. Now, they're a lot bigger than his Hot Wheels car. These are actual die-cast cars that are probably this big. So, I want to see what he can do and see if he can uh, make great photos with the diecast cars I gave him. So let's check it out. So Bradley has delivered me two uh, NASCAR diecasts. Now I haven't shot NASCAR diecasts in a really long time, but <clears throat> when it comes to diecast photography, you kind of train your brain to think small. So you gotta get an idea of what you want in your head. So I think NASCAR, I think racing, I think them going head to head. So, I'm gonna use the tennis court that we're on right now and um, probably add a speed effect to my image and post. So um, my goal right now is just to get as close as possible and make these look like they're going head to head. A lot of people don't, you know, don't know that well, first, they haven't even heard of die-cast photography. So, you know, yeah. but for those who have, don't realize that automotive photography and die-cast photography are very similar. And since, you know, I've been around cars my whole life, um, you kind of adapt of what works when you shoot real cars. And I just manifest that into a much smaller scale. When you, when you take a picture of an, a car and you stand like this and you take a picture of a car, that picture is not going to turn out very well. Um, so if you want your picture to be appealing, you got to get low. So it's, when you see automotive photographers, you always see them at a low angle, or you're going to see them up high. Same thing with diecast photography. You want to get low, or you want to get high. You don't want to just point and shoot. It's not going to work. People are going to see that you have a picture of a car, but they're really not going to, you're really not going to draw them in that way. They're just going to see a picture of a, of a toy car and that's it. Um, I get feedback from some followers that say that they do a double take, that they actually thought that it was a real car at first because I post real cars on my Instagram as well. So sometimes they have a hard time at first glance. Is this one real or is this one fake? <laughs> so uh, that's pretty funny. It's pretty funny. So yeah, guys, shooting diecast cars and shooting regular cars is pretty much the same thing. You are shooting lower angles or you're shooting higher angles. You just got to find the right angle and the right environment and the right lighting to get the right kind of photo to get a wonderful photo that he gets um so with this next section here you actually get to see how he actually shoots and what angles and how he doesn't actually have to go far to take these photos it's actually very interesting we actually go to a park and he shows me the ropes of what he does check it out
So here, you would think just a walk away um, to most people. But for me, this is a very good spot for me to shoot, okay. um, depending on the time of day. Um, I usually come during the evenings because when the sun's over here, I get a nice natural glow. But what I like about these rails is, for one, they're wide. I like the color because, for example, this little guy right here, this little Shelby Daytona Cobra, um, I can use this rail, part of the rail here, place the car here, and then I can shoot low and I can get this car at a very good angle. And I can choose any background I want. I can choose the trees over here. I can choose the field over here. It's pretty cool. I usually tuck the camera right here and then I can point that way. So you do basically, this is what you do. You zoom in. Got See how you get in this this nice more background. Yeah. And you can even get as low as to this railing right here. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yep. You get it to basically where this the edge of the railing mm -hmm. is just out of view. Okay. So when you see this come into view, you slightly go up, and then that's how you know how low you can go. Because you try to get these out of your view. I mean, you could always crop them out. Yeah. But um, but that's how I do it. That's how low I shoot them. And it just makes the background so. Nice. So blurry. It's pretty <laughs> nice. Just like if you're shooting a um, real car, you're the best side of the vehicle is usually facing the sun. So I like getting down here because I can get low and get the camera low down here. And then I can get this in the background and you get that. Mm. What you mean. Mm -hmm. And then typically you want to get Anything that may be covering up your wheels that doesn't look right. So sometimes you can pat the rocks down so you're making sure that you're getting a clear view of your wheels. This helps that the truck is jacked up. If you have a really low car, it's going to look weird. Oh, uh, yeah. Listen. Yeah, so. What I like to do is all about getting that angle. You want people to, to think that you're, basically you make the most out of what environment you're in. Mm, pretty much. So yeah guys, it shows you don't have to go far to create great photos like that. Um, he just went really next door. We didn't go anywhere. The park that we went to was, eh. I mean, it was just soccer goals and open field in a parking lot. I mean, there really wasn't much to this park. And all he did was he took whatever he could and he made an awesome image, just like when he had the truck on the gravel. He's done that before. And you would think he was in some exotic place he went to, but he really didn't go anywhere. He stayed, he really stayed in his area and just made best of what he had. And that's very important, especially if you're um, upcoming artist use what you have around you and make art with that before you start going like traveling and doing anything make sure you know how to be creative with the own with the stuff you have right in front of your face and that spoke a lot to me because i was like that's how i started using everything i could that's right in front of my face so that's pretty much it of this video guys um i'm going to be putting out this another video like this next week um called the creator series so this is the creator series so the first episode this was ce brinkley so if you guys like this video go ahead and like it if you want to subscribe go ahead and subscribe i will be putting out regular videos too like review videos and other little videos i put on youtube um like i always do i'm gonna put those videos out too um but i definitely want to get this creator series going and without further ado guys i'm bradley this is eighth of photography oh and by the way 
we did have a photo shoot after this, so I'm gonna end this video with the B-roll that we did together of the photo shoot. It was Halloween, so he's gonna have a mask on, and um, it's pretty dope, so I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.